Okay. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it, certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes, and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in for Spacemen Hockey on the Spacemen Broadcast Network. Tonight, the Fort Wayne Spacemen are off to an amazing start on the season as they have a perfect 3-0 record. The Spacemen currently sit in second place in the Midwest East Division with six points. They trail the Chicago Cougars by four points, who are 5-1 for 10 points. So a couple big points up for grabs this weekend as the Spacemen get set to play the Chicago Cougars in a doubleheader this weekend. Over the weekend, the USPHL has awarded the Players of the Month for September. The Spacemen's very own Jared Fisher's awarded the forward positions for player of the month for September with eight goals and eight assists for 16 points and is currently averaging a 5.33 point per game. Jared is currently sitting one point behind the lead for the players in total. Jesper Dang of the Metro Jets Hockey Club was also awarded Player of the Month for defenseman, while Kai Tomatia, I apologize if I messed that up, for the Pittsburgh Vengeance have won Goaltender of the Month for September. We are gearing up for the Chicago Cougars. As I said, they currently sit in first place in the Midwest East Division with a 5-1 record. And, of course, the Fort Wayne Spacemen look up to get a few points up on the Chicago Cougars, excuse me, to get a divisional tie. I will be your play-by-play -play announcer, Brandon Porter, as we get ready to gear up between the Fort Wayne Spacemen and the Chicago Cougars.
and that was the national anthem. So we'll take a look at the starting goaltenders. First for the Chicago Cougars, starting in goal is going to be number 35, Daniel Simbarera. And starting in goal for the Fort Wayne Spaceman will be number 30, Alex Shelkinov. We are gearing up for puck drop between the Spacemen and the Chicago Cougars. As I said, the Spacemen are off to a fantastic start, going 3-0, and they extended that record to 3-0 by defeating the Metro, or excuse me, the Motor City Hockey Club last week in both of their games by a score of 12-4 and a score of 8-4. So off the draw, it is going to be played in the neutral zone by looks like the Chicago Cougars number 22. That is Andrew Cervantes. Play will be whistled down right off the bat. 10 seconds in for an off sides. A correction on that, that was number 22, Alexander Arnold. Face off one by the spacemen. They have it in their own zone coming across to the near side. And now they're coming into the zone. Three on two, a shot there's blocked in front, now played down low, and now to the near corner. Here's LaPointe, still along the corner, now takes it to the far side. Schiebel with it now, as he gets poke checked there, and now it's played up, and stolen by LaPointe, he cuts to the high slot, drops it back, and it bumped off the play, was, looks like Barnes, or excuse me, as Barnes, as now it is the Cougars playing it at center ice, a big hit there on Schiebel, and now it is going to be played by number 20, Jared Fisher. Spaceman trying to come down the other way, but it is broken up and played now by in the defensive zone. Now up the ice to number 17, Tom's Barons. He will flip it into the zone to be played by the goaltender, Simbera. Now along the far boards. It's going to be sent down low, but blocked. Now it's going to be Huffman trying to center it to the slot. That's knocked away. Now set up the boards by Rukala of the Chicago Cougars. Now along the near corner in the spaceman zone, tied up along the boards. Now Chicago comes away. Centering feed and a good save there by the goaltender, Shelkinov. And now the spaceman look to break out. Huffman gets it up by his. Here come the spaceman into the zone. Shot and a good save by the goaltender, Simbera. Shot coming from Tom's Barons along the near circle, and a good save there by Simbera. As I said, one player to watch for the spaceman is going to be the captain, Jared Fisher, who was awarded the USPHL Player of the Month for September. Now coming up the boards inside the spaceman zone, here's the Cougars trying to get a shot there. It is blocked and now playing behind the net. The centering feed is stopped there by the goaltender Shelkinov and he will hang on. Face off, one in the spaceman zone by the Cougars. Now a shot from the point goes wide. That was coming from number 88, Cody Marquette. Now playing behind the net, it bumped off the play. And now to the near corner. Coming away with the number 28, Devin Perry, trying to get it out of the zone. Spaceman, kind of unusual being hemmed into their own zone. Now inside the zone, as going to be bumped off there by Marquette. Now played it by Marquette. He's coming up the center ice right through the logo into the zone for the spaceman along the corner. Shot, that's in the glove. Rebound opportunity is covered up by the goaltender, Shelkinov. 11, 20, or excuse me, 17, 21 remaining in the first period. We are scoreless between the spaceman and the Chicago Cougars. Face off inside the spaceman zone. Winning the draw is going to be Brandon McNeil, and now it's going to be played in the corner. Still playing along the Zamboni doors, trying to work it free. And it's still tied up, coming in to help. Low point for the spaceman. McNeil in there as well. 
And now it finally comes loose along the far side. And it's tied up once again. Now out to the point. Looking for an option, number 65 of the Chicago Cougars. That is Adam Barini. And a good save there by the goaltender, Shelkanov. So, Spaceman kind of getting an unusual feeling. Normally, they're in the visiting team offensive zone with the pressure. So, this is kind of new for the Fort Wayne Spaceman as they've had tremendous pressure through the first three games. And now they're trying to get a taste of their own medicine. As now it's played along the near side, shot blocked in front. Now banking off the boards, trying to get it out. And now it does. And now a 2 on 1 is broken up. Good defensive play there by number 65, Barini. And I do apologize to all the Chicago Cougar family and friends. I do apologize if I do mess up some of the names. Coming inside the zone now for Chicago is going to be Rukala. Now Arnold banks off the boards up. A two on one developing for the Cougars, but it's broken up now at the point. And now it's going to be banked off the board. Spaceman look to come the other way, and it's going to be deflected into the zone by number five. That is Trevor Stokes. That one in the zone, play on side, shot, block, save, and now it's going to be played by Tom's Barons. Barons behind the net looking for an outlet pass. And now he'll dig it up to the far side. Fisher up ice to Huffman. Huffman cutting down low, backhand, and that one goes wide. Now played down low. Here is Barons in the corner, bumped off a play, and now it's going to be still held in the corner. Now it's to the far side. That one banked off the glass, and it's going to be held at the point. By number four, that is Alvon Barrar. Sent down low to fish the play. Now to Huffman. Huffman with it now along the far corner. Huffman cut to the slot. That one shot wide, and it's going to be held just in the zone by Jack Huffman, and that one goes to the far side. Looking to get it out of the zone, Nato will do so. Here is what the Fort Wayne Spacemen are used to. Here is Fisher along the boards. Pressured there by Stokes. Now sent to the far corner, and now it's gonna be played by Barons. Barons leaves it for Huffman. Huffman centering defeat to Fisher, and a good stick lift there by Bauer. And now the Cougars come the other way. And that one is going to go down the ring, but icing will be waved off. So now it's going to be shot and gloved down by number four of the Chicago Cougars. That is Braden Hemminger. Now along the near side in the corner, McNeil trying to battle for the puck. And it finally comes loose. That one's going to be banked off, kept it alive by number two of the Chicago Cougars. That is Spanos. And now inside the zone for the spaceman, Schiebel. Schiebel down low behind the net to the corner. Now along the near side is going to be Schiebel once again. Keep it down low. Robbins out to the point. And the shot goes just wide. Rebound is going to go all the way to the near side. Schiebel with a spin shot. And that one goes wide. Emmy Johnson with it. Now it's stolen. Here goes the Chicago Cougars. He's going to take it along to the corner. Number 26. I believe that would be Ryan Stark. Shebo along the far, excuse me, near side now, as now it's going to be inside the Cougar zone. The point, applying pressure, but unable to come away with it. And here come the Cougars the other way. Number 24, that is Alec Mahoney into the zone, and the shot is saved by the goaltender, Shelkanov. 13 at 22 remaining in of the first period. We are still scoreless between the Fort Wayne Spacemen and the Chicago Cougars. Face off, one by the Cougars, shot on net. That one is stopped and will go into the safety netting. So good back and forth battle so far as the Spacemen and the Cougars seem to be able to apply offensive pressure in each other's zones for a sustainable time. As now it's gonna be played along the near side and not out of the zone as that one's kept alive. Looks like by number 18 of the Chicago Cougars, that is Tomas Rukala. Center and feed, shot, and that one is a score. The Chicago Cougars take the early lead.
So a good centering feed. So Chicago gets on the board first. It is going to be going to number 19. That is Danny Manorino with the assist, number 13, Dylan Parker. Now it's going to be played along the far side. That one shot on net and a good save by the goaltender, Shelkanov. Now along the near corner is going to be played up ice. Coming inside the zone here is McNeil trying to center. Nobody there. Huffman with it now. Huffman sends it down low, but stopped there by number 88. That is Cody Marquette. Now out to the point, an errant pass goes just wide, and now it's going to be all the way inside the spaceman zone. Now left behind the net for the player, Brandon McNeil, is trying to get it out of the zone, is unable to do so, but a delayed off sides for the Cougars gives the spaceman a chance to take a look at their options. Rukala with it now, trying to get inside of the spaceman zone, play on side. But now it's going to be sent around the boards to LaPointe, but it bounces off the Zamboni doors. And now it's going to be along the Cougar bench. Alvin Berard will send it inside the zone. And now it's going to be played behind the net by the goaltender. And now it's going to be still tied up and now to the far side. As clearing attempt is knocked down by Huffman, and that one will go for an icing. 11-18 remaining in the first period. Chicago strikes first off a goal from number 19, Danny Manorino, and he had the assist from Dylan Parker. Face off, one by Robbins. And now to the point, here is Barrar with a shot. That is blocked in front. And now it's going to be played along the near corner by Schiebel. Schiebel to a point. A point pressured on the boards, and now he gets around another check. And now he is tied up by Barimi, and the shot there is blocked in front. Schiebel with it now along the near corner. That one's going to be knocked away and sent up to the point by Gamble. And now it's going to be sent over to Alvin Berard. Berard a shot. That one blocked in front by Barimi. And that one will be sent down the ice. And it will go for an icing. So faceoff will come all the way back down inside of the Chicago zone. It is going to be to the right of the goaltender, Sembera. Or excuse me, it looks like it's actually going to be to the left of the goaltender, Sembera. As Fisher goes to the draw, he'll win it for the spaceman. Shot! Scores off the point! That one coming from Tom's Barons. He will shoot it off the iron and in. And now we have a tie game with 10.36 remaining in the first period. So coming off the faceoff at center ice, Barons with the goal, Fisher with the assist. And we are tied up at one. Now in the neutral zone, played up ice by number 24 of the Cougars. That is Alec Mahoney. Now out to the point. Shot. That one tipped in front by Mahoney. And the Chicago Cougars take the lead right back. And it's two to one. So that one being redirected in front by Alec Mahoney as that one came from the point by number five, Trevor Stokes. Chicago. 
So Mahoney gets the Cougars right back on top as now is going to be played in the near corner by Marquette. Marquette sends comes back up to the near corner. Now it's going to be tied up. Here is Perry trying to get in front, unable to do so. Now Mahoney will flip it down the ice to be played by McNeil. McNeil pressured now, and it's a stick lift there, and he's taken down on the play. Number 26, Ryan Stark. Now it's going to be played by the spaceman. Wrapped around the boards, kept alive at the point by Cody Marquette. And now it's out of the zone. And delayed off sides for the Cougars. Gives the spaceman some time to look. Up eyes to Perry. Perry throws it into the zone. That one on net, gloved down by the goaltender, Simbera. As now it's going to be behind the net. Out to the near boards, the point, trying to get possession, unable to do so. And now Rukawa trying to get out of the zone, but kept alive by McNeil. McNeil to the point, poke check there, and that one's banked off the boards now. And now a fast break coming in for the Cougars. Deeks in the backhand, and a good save by the goaltender Shelkinov. That was coming from Brett Bauer. And now a redirected front, and that one goes wide. Now to the near corner, played by number 22 for the Cougars. That is now out to the point. Now a foot race for the Buck. Tom's Barron's trying to get away with it, but unable to do so as he is tied up on the play. Fisher with it now in the high slot. Shot, it blocked in front. Huffman out to the point. Shot, that is going to be deflected and out of the zone. Gloved down by number five, Jack Huffman. And now it's, here's Barron's shot. That one goes wide. Robbins tied up along the far side. Huffman with it now also. And coming away with it will be the Cougars. Into the zone, number nine for the Cougars. That is Tim Leskowski. And now it's going to be at the point. Saturday feed tipped in front once again. Chicago really loving that play, getting a shot towards the net and then looking to redirect it as now it's going to be played in the neutral zone. That one wrapped around the boards and stopped behind the net by the goaltender, Simbera. And now it's going to be up to Harrard as he'll bank it off the glass and back down low. Stokes sending that one off the glass, now into the spaceman zone. Called down on the play was Barrard, looking, kind of looking for a penalty, but not going to get it. And now it's poked free from the goaltender, Saturday feed, and that one's outside the slot. Another shot and a good save and another chance by the Cougars, and it's turned away once again. Marquette trying to keep it alive for the Cougars, now played in the neutral zone. Taking down on the play is LaPointe. And we will have the first penalty of the game. It looks like it's going to go on the Chicago Cougars. Number 74 for the Chicago Cougars will go to the box. That is Jake Shell, excuse me, on this one, Shellethreath. Shellreath. So Shellworth to the box for the Cougars. The Spacemen with their first power play opportunity of the night. That's going to be played at the point and batted out of the zone. Good hand-eye coordination there by Ryan Stark. The point behind the net. Decides to start skating it slowly. Now over to Fisher. That one goes just wide, but Fisher gains possession anyway. Now a shot from the point. Good blocker to save, and it's loose outside the crease. Rebound and a great save by the goaltender, Simbera. Minute 36 remaining in the power play for the spaceman. It's gonna be Huffman to the draw, but that is gonna be won by Heminger of the Cougars. And now it's gonna be played at the point, sent down low. Huffman with it now along the far corner. As now he's pressured there by Mahoney. Now behind the net, looking for a play to set up. Barron's to Fisher. Out to the point. LaPointe with it. He'll send it to Perry. Back to LaPointe. LaPointe a shot. That one goes off of Barron's and now to Fisher along the near boards. 
Fisher to LaPointe. Back over to Fisher. Jared Fisher taking a look at his options. Decides to go back to LaPointe. Trying to get it down low. Tom's Barrett's out to Fisher. Fisher to LaPointe. A point of shot tipped in front and wide by Huffman. Fisher sends it out to the point, and that one is sent out of the zone, and the spacemen will have to regroup. Stolen there, and a shot saved. Big rebound opportunity for the Cougars, and now it's in up ice. Here is Huffman. Huffman backhand down low, but stolen there by number two, Tommy Spanos. Now to the corner. It is going to be controlled by Huffman. Huffman taking a look at his options. Cross eyes past the Fishers, tipped away by Rukala. And now LaPointe has it in the neutral zone with 17 seconds remaining in the power play. Spaceman with it now, trying to center it. Here's Perry. Perry's backhand to Sheeble is intercepted, but Sheeble able to get it nonetheless. All right, so LaPointe a shot. That is wide. Now played by Sheeble. Sheeble with a shot. Save. Rebound for Perry. It's tied up. Rukala. And now here come the spacemen. Another chance. That one's off the iron by Schiebel. Perry with it now, pressured by Arnold. Now it looks like Arnold's going to come away with a good keep there by Berard. And now it's going to be controlled at the point by Berard. As he is pressured now by Arnold, trying to get around Spanos, able to do so. Berard down low, centers it, and it's stopped there by the goaltender. Now over to the far corner, sent up ice, kept alive there, but momentarily here comes the Cougars, number 22, Alexander Arnold. But that one's whistled down for an off sides. Chicago still maintaining the 2-1 lead late here in the first period. The faceoff just outside of the spaceman zone. Faceoff won by Chicago. Marquette will send it down low. And that's going to be stopped behind the net by Emmy Johnson. Now out to the point. That's going to be stolen and skating down the ice and sent into the zone. Looks like it's going to be Perry. Now it's stopped behind the net, and now to the far side. Berard gets it back down low. Sent to number 19, Lucas Robbins. Robbins trying to get it to the center. That's stolen by Parker, and the Cougars are coming the other way. Parker gets around Berard, and now is going to be in the neutral zone, played now by Marquette. In the neutral zone now. That one's going to be shot on net. The goaltender Sambera makes the stop and plays it to Marquette, who takes looks at his options and decides to go with the stretch pass. That one just go goes over the stick of Brett Barry, but it's no license. He was able to touch it. Barry sends it down low. Now going to be played by Amy Johnson. Fisher with it now for the spaceman. And now Barron sends it up to Huffman. Huffman will send it to the far corner to be played now by Marquette. Him and Huffman tied up, and we will have a penalty on the play. As with extracurricular, is going to be Huffman. It looks like Marquette. We have an injured Cougar in the corner as well. So Huffman and Marquette to the box. We'll check to see if there's any more penalties going to be handed out. 2.55 remaining in the first. Chicago holding the 2-1 lead. Looks like it's Rukala that is the injured Cougar in the corner as he's helped off to the Chicago bench. The referee and the linesman talking over the penalty, see what they're going to assess, whether it's uh, going to be a minor or possibly a major. Here's 
So Huffman gets a five minute major for boarding. And sounds like Marquette is gonna get a double minor. Got to wait to the reason for that. As the officials given the explanation to Fisher. So we'll wait the cause of the double minor to Marquette. But Huffman getting the five minute major for boarding. But 255 remaining in the first period. One has to hope that Rukala is gonna be okay on that play. So the linesmen and the scorekeepers are trying to get everything squared away on the scoreboard. Make sure they have the right amount of time put up on the board. So the four white spacemen kind of in unfamiliar territory as they are trailing in the game. So Ruffing is going to be the double minor for Marquette. And Huffman still with the five minute major for boarding. So faceoff going to be inside of the spaceman zone to the left of the goaltender Shelkinov. Looks like he's gonna be skating four on four. Off the draw, out to the point, and that one was going to escape to neutral zone. Stokes plays it off the boards. Fisher trying to come away with it, but unable to do so. So it's gonna be played by Shellrath. And that one is gonna have a penalty on the play. So the spaceman going to the box once again this is something Coach Schrock probably has talked to these players about is staying out of the boxes. That kind of burnt them in their game against the Motor City Hockey Club last weekend in their second game. So Brandon McNeil goes to the box for hooking, and the Chicago Cougars will get their first power play opportunity of the game with 12.41 remaining in the first period. Arnold to the draw for the Cougars. He wins it back and now played at the point by number 24. That is Mahoney. Mahoney with it now, sends it over to Stark. Stark, cross eyes pass, blocked in front. Now Mahoney to Stark. Now over to number four, back to Stark. Shot saved by the goaltender. Rebound opportunity is cleared away. And now is gonna be played by the goaltender. Sent up ice to number four. That is Braden Hemminger. Hemminger with it now. He will try to get inside the zone, able to do so by getting around the captain Fisher of the Spacemen. Out to the point to number 24, Mahoney. Mahoney sends it over to the far side for Stark. Sends it over to Hemminger. Mahoney a shot, scores! So the Spacemen now down by two off of the power play by goal by Mahoney as it's now three to one. We'll wait to get the official call on the goal, but it looked like it was a goal by Mahoney. So Mahoney gets the goal with giving credit to number 26 on the play. As I believe that is Ryan Stark. And we shall wait to see if they give any other assists out for the Cougar goal.
Okay, excuse me on the play. The 26 is Josef Martinsik. And Hemminger also picking up an assist on the Cougar goal. So Mahoney from Martinsik and Hemminger as Chicago takes a commanding three to one lead with a minute 53 remaining in the first period. Scorekeepers currently trying to reset the board for the right power play times. So as I said, Spaceman kind of in unfamiliar territory as they are trailing two goals late here in the first period. So it looks like the officials are going to give the okay. And the face off, one by the Cougars. Stokes sends it up ice, and that one goes for an icing. And the face off will come back down inside the Chicago zone. Fisher to the draw against Hemminger. And that's going to be won by Hemminger as he sends it back to Stokes. Stokes back down low is going to be played to the far side by Spanos. Spanos looking up ice to Hemminger and coming away with it is going to be Hemminger, but poked away there by Emmy Johnson. Fisher sends it up tight to Tom's Barons, and he's poke checked there at the point. And now Hemminger trying to come away with it. Hemminger, shot. And a good save there by the goaltender Shelkinov. Minute 20 remaining on the clock. 325 remaining in the major to Huffman. 225 remaining in the double minor to number 88, Cody Markete. So we're still skating four on four. Face off, won by the Cougars. Out to the point, but that one's tipped away there by, looks like, Perry. That one's going to be flipped up off the boards and down the ice. The point trying to come away with it. And now Perry gives it to the point along the far side. The point sends it down low. Now it's going to be a long corner to Stokes, and now Hemminger coming away with it. Hemminger trying to get it out of his own, but it hits the referee. Now the point comes away with it. The point. Being pressured there by Hemminger. Now Stokes will push him into the corner. And now that's out to the point. To be played by number five, Jack Huffman. Huffman loses it to Hemminger. And coming down the ice is going to be Hemminger for the Cougars. 35 seconds. Now sends it to the far corner for Josef Martinsik. Now it's going to be out to the point. Shot there is going to be sent wide. That's coming from number 65, Adam Barimi. Now Yosef with a shot, and that one's into the gut of the goaltender, Shelkinov. Face off inside of the spaceman zone to the right of the goaltender, Shelkinov. As that one's going to be won by the Cougars, but coming down the ice with 14 seconds remaining on the clock. Here is Schiebel. Schiebel, shot, tip the front, backhand opportunities. It'll be sent behind the net. Now coming away with it. Stokes looking up ice, blocked down by LaPointe. And now here's Berard. Berard avoids a hit at the whistle. Schiebel runs out of time. So we go into the first intermission. Chicago up by a score of three to one. So 
Well, Chicago up three to one. One oh five remaining in the double minor to Marquette. Two oh five remaining in the five minute major to Huffman. When we come back, we'll have the first intermission recap here on the Spaceman Broadcast Network. Yakni Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Yakni Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors for every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it, certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes, and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview sportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walking Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Brooks steals it, tips it away to himself. He'll go to the hoop and slam it down. They attack. They get a great shot. Terry comes. And look at oh. Shot hits the post. And the center in three to Luke Hipster shot scores. Oh, oh, almost picked, picked off by Ethan Hoover. And the takedown. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's a... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. 
treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. So we are back at the Sport One Parkview Ice House in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We are in the middle of the first intermission and the Fort Wayne Spacemen kind of find themselves in unfamiliar territory as they are down three to one to the Chicago Cougars. Chicago opening up the scoring first due to a goal by Danny Manorino as he gets the assist from Dylan Park off a good centering pass from Parker to Manorino. The spacemen answered to tie it right back up at one due to a goal from Tom's Barons and the captain, Jared Fisher. The usual goal productions for the spacemen is Barons, LaPointe, and Fisher. So they're always trying to find a way onto the score sheet, and they do so to tie it up at one. But Chicago said, hold on a minute and they came right back to take the lead due to a goal from Alec Mahoney as he tipped that one into the net to make it two to one. And then for insurance, Alec Mahoney once again scores on the power play to give the Cougars a three to one lead as we are in the, in, excuse me, in the first intermission. The spaceman at trail by two. So the spacemen, as I said, they're kind of in uncharted territory right now. They are not really used to a back and forth game. They've mostly had the chances of mostly being in their offensive zone for 90% of the play here. But here they find themselves trailing badly as Chicago showing that they have the offensive pressure as well. And it's equal to the spacemen. So one thing the spacemen have to do though, and this goes back to last week against Motor City, is they have to stay out of the box. The penalties really do hurt this team as they do tend to take them at a bad time. So that's one thing for the spacemen to kind of improve on is keeping their composure when things start getting a little chippy and staying out of the box so they can skate five on five and use that offensive pressure that they know they can do and the speed that they have thanks to the Perry brothers and the Robbins brothers. And a lot of these players on the spacemen have played here in Fort Wayne in the high school division. So they're very quite familiar with how each other play and how they can be and the strengths that they have, but some the penalties getting them in trouble. Sometimes they just can't apply that strength to the team. And as a result, Chicago is making the pay as they are out working in the spaceman right now. As I said, it's 3-1 Chicago. If we come back, though, it'll be the second period between Chicago and Fort Wayne here on the Spaceman Broadcast Network. Yakby Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007. Thank you for supporting Summit City Sports. For the last several years, we've provided the Fort Wayne community and beyond with coverage of a variety of sports, thanks to our title sponsorship from Parkview Sports Medicine. Since we began in 2015, our annual budget has covered the cost of videographers and commentators to over 300 plus games each year. New equipment and maintenance of that equipment, 
along with increased broadcast rights fees from the IHSAA. This season, we're reaching out to friends, families, and local businesses for additional sponsorships and donations. You can help us grow and get coverage to your favorite team or sport. A Summit City Sports sponsorship or donation will help make that happen. We have the goal of bringing fans live stream games of every SAC game we cover. With the additional funds, we'd invest in mobile internet devices, allowing us to bring our supporters every SAC conference football and boys and girls basketball games live, as well as more coverage for sports like cross country, tennis, golf, swimming, wrestling, track and field, baseball, and softball. For more information on sponsorships or how to donate, Visit SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors for every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview sportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walking Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Brooks steals it, tips it away to himself. He'll go to the hoop and slam it down. They attack. They get a great shot. Here he comes. And look at Shot hits the post. And the center in feed to Luke Gibson. Shot scores. Oh, oh, almost picked, picked off by Ethan Hoover. And the takedown. 
The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne Mad Ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... Uh... Go to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. Welcome to the Summit City. So coming off the intermission, that one's going to be played inside the Chicago zone. Fisher with it now along the near corner. Fisher trying to send it down low to, looks like Tom's Barons. As that one's now out to Berard at the point. Berard back to those cross size pass to Fisher, does not connect. Now it's going to be behind the net, looks like by Emmy Johnson. Barons with it now. That one is a good save by the goaltender. And now it comes out to the neutral zone. That one now played in the neutral zone. Looks like by Emmy Johnson. He'll send it over to Alvin Berard. Now it's going to be played by the Cougars inside their own defensive end. That one stretch eyes pass looking for number 16. That one is stick with by Johnson. That one looking for Bauer. Now Johnson stretch eyes pass. Here's Barons. Barons in the loan. Shot. Scores! So Emmy Johnson with the stretch pass out to Tom's Barons, and he comes in on a breakaway and scores to bring the spaceman back to within one. It is now three to two. So Emmy Johnson, number 91, getting the assist off the goal from Tom's Barons. As it's now three to two Chicago, and Chicago coming back down the ice. Looks like Marquette with it now. He comes out of the box off of his double minor. Marquette out to Manorino. Now to Yosef. Yosef with it now. Shot saved by the goaltender Shelkinov. Yosef, poke check there by LaPointe. And now it's gonna be played in the neutral zone by Marquette. Now here's Heminger, Heminger alone shot, that one, just wide of the net. Yosef centers it, trying to poke away with Shelkinov, but he missed it, and now it's out to the point. Now along this boards, it is, looks like Heminger. Now it's gonna be played by Manorino, and that one's stolen, kept alive at the point by Marquette. Marquette gets it down low to Yosef, that one now along the near corner. That one shot down the ice, and the spaceman returned to full strength as Marquette chased down by Fisher, and he avoids Huffman on the play. Huffman trying to apply pressure to Marquette. Along the far boards, coming with it is going to be the Cougars. 
Stretch pass there, up the ice, looking for, looks like Arnold. And now it's gonna be played by Fisher. Fisher to Barons. Barons two goals on the night. And now it's played by Arnold. Across the, to the near corner for number 24 of the Cougars. And now it's gonna be cut to live by the spaceman. Huffman gets up to Fisher. Fisher, cross ice pass, shot, scores! It's a hat trick for Tom's Barons. And we are tied at three. So the usual suspects on the board. Fisher connects with Barons once again. Barons with the natural hat trick. And we are tied three to three with 17-12 remaining in the second. And number nine, Huffman getting assist as well off the goal as the Cougars are whistled down for an offsides. So that's kind of the offensive pressure the spacemen are used to as they get two quick ones to tie this game back up at three. McNeil with a now, but a turnover there at the point. Here comes Chicago the other way. And now it's gonna be played by Robbins. Robbins loses it, Chicago playing with more Pep in their step, a shot from the point is stopped by the goaltender Shalkinov. Shot coming from number 65 of the Cougars, that is Adam Barimi. Shower to the draw for the Cougars, and it's gonna be won by the Spaceman. That one comes out to the side of the net, gloved and covered by the goaltender Shelkinov. Cougars going for a line change, and it looks like it's going to be Hemminger to the draw against Robbins. Face off one by Robbins, now played by Alvin Berard. Now out to the point, kept alive there by the Cougars. And the center and feed, a backhand, save, rebound, scores! That is Alec Mahoney, he gets a hat trick himself and the Cougars retake the lead as Alec Mahoney cashes home a rebound, and it's 4-3 Chicago. So Hemminger with the assist along with number 24, Josef Marchinsik. And Chicago retakes the lead. So Mahoney with a hat trick of his own to answer Barons. It's now it's gonna be played in the far corner by Fisher. A drop pass is now to Huffman. Huffman with a now behind the net, trying to wrap around, but is blocked in front by Marquette. It's now McNeil at the point, back down low to Huffman. Huffman sends it to the corner, broken up there, looks like by Hemminger. Now it's gonna be tied up and now poked loose, now to the near side and a stretch pass to the middle, cannot connect to Mahoney. As now is gonna be Huffman, a heavy hit there by Marquette. Here's Barons. Barons a shot, save, rebound is gonna be grabbed there by Hemminger. And now it's gonna be played in the neutral zone by Mahoney, Mahoney in the zone. He has McNeil, gets around him, Deeks and a good save by Shelkinov who covers the puck. Kazmarek making sure the goaltender covers as he comes into the zone, but it looks like Barrar was giving a couple pushes after the whistle. Face off in the zone for the spaceman. Perry right against Kazmarek. Face off one by Kazmarek, a shot, and that one goes wide. 
Now tipped in front by Amy Johnson in the way, as now Perry goes hard into the boards. And now Casimir comes in and throws the other Perry brother into the boards. Cameron Perry fell into the boards and he took a hard tumble in. And after the play, Kesmeric came in and pushed Devin Perry into the boards. So we'll see if anything happens there on that. Captain Fisher getting an explanation from the referee as to why there's going to be no penalty on the play. And the faceoff will be inside the spaceman's own Arnold against Robbins. Faceoff won by Arnold, but that one's sent into the neutral zone. Shebo applying pressure. Now it's going to be played by Manorino. Now Amy Johnson trying to get it out, unable to do so, kept alive by Parker. Parker along the near corner sends it around to the far side for Manorino. Manorino applying pressure. Arnold with an owl across the ice. Spanos a shot, and that one's gloved by Shelkinov. So Robbins against Arnold once again inside the zone. Faceoff is going to be won by Robbins this time. As now it's over to the far side for Schiebel. Schiebel gets it up to Robbins. And he'll come into the zone. Trying to flip it to himself. And now it's going to be stolen by Parker. And that one goes into the safety netting at neutral ice. So face off right at the center ice logo with 1437 remaining in the second period. Chicago back up four to three. As now Arnold flips it to the far corner. That one to be played by Huffman. Kept alive at the point. Shot and a good save and directed to the near side. LaPointe trying to get it out, able to do so. As now is going to be shot back into the zone. And coming into the zone is Arnold. Arnold centers to Manorino and it's knocked away and another shot. And that one's gloved down by Shelkinov. That one coming from Josef Martinsik. So Josef finds himself kind of alone in the high slot, trying to just throw it on the net, see if he can catch the goal from the Shelkinov off guard a little bit. But Shelkinov is equal to the task and face off inside the zone. Fisher against Hemminger. Hemminger wins the draw. That one's sent down low by Mahoney, who's got the hat trick for the Cougars. That one's thrown on net and covered. Looks like the shot came from Yosef in the corner. Fisher and Hemminger to the draw once again. That time it's won by Hemminger once again. The shot blocked in front by Fisher, but kept alive by, Mark, by Markete, excuse me. And that's going to be played up ice by Barons. Barons throws it in the zone. That one's in the glove of the goaltender. As now it looks like Yosef has a problem with Fisher, kind of giving the goaltender a bit of a snow job. So Fisher and Hemminger once again to the face-off circle. That time is going to be won by Hemminger once again. Marquette to the corner, and now it's turned over. Shot save and a rebound. It goes just above the net. Huffman battling for possession. It's going to be grabbed there by, looks like, Hemminger. And now a stretch pass up to the near side. That one goes off the board, looking for Mahoney. Marquette banks it off the glass and down to Berard. Fisher 
gets it in the zone. Thomas Barron's bumped off the play by Heminger. And here come the Cougars back the other way. Yosef gets around the defense, centers it, but a good defensive play there by McNeil. At the point, gets it back down low. And now to the near corner, McNeil. Pressured by Yosef, and a heavy hit there. And now it's gonna cause a penalty. So Yosef and McNeil exchanging words on that one as Yosef goes to the box. Looks like cross-checking will be the call. Wait for the official call. Cross-checking is a call. Yosef to the box and the spacemen are back on the power play. But 13-12 remaining in this second as they look to tie it up. Robbins goes to the draw for Fort Wayne, and they win it. Emmy Johnson gives it out to Alvin Berard. Berard a shot. That one saved and put to the near corner. Coming away with it is going to be, looks like Chicago, as they bank it out of the zone. Looks like that one came from, looks like number 74 for the Chicago Cougars. That is Jake Shellref. I do apologize if I am messing up that name. Gerard keeps it alive for the space when shot goes just wide. And that one rolls to the side of the net. The goaltender had to dive out and cover the puck. Simbera diving out the side as that one went off the board and started rolling back to his crease. So he had to make the save and cover it up. 127 remaining in the power play for the spaceman. Face off to the right of the goaltender, Simbera. That's gonna be won by the spaceman. Fisher to La Point, back to Fisher. Fisher looking at his options, decide to start skating it down low, but it turns back to the point. La Point a drive, blocked in front by the Cougars, and that one sent out of the zone and down the ice. Block coming from number two for Chicago. That is Thomas Spanos. Coming down the ice is Perry. Perry gets around the defense, and that goes to the corner. Perry now to the near side, out to LaPointe at the point. LaPointe over to Huffman. Huffman down low to Barons. Back out to Huffman. Huffman a shot, tipped in front, but that goes right to the stick of Spanos. And he tries to clear it, but knocked down by Tom's Barons. Now to the near side, that one's away from Perry, and here comes Chicago the other way. That one into the skate of Huffman, LaPointe with it now. LaPointe, stretch pass up to Fisher, Fisher into the zone. Jared with the center feed, scores! Perry ties it up, and it's a power play goal. So Cameron Perry with the goal and assisting on the play was Jared Fisher and LaPointe with the assist as well. So Cameron Perry from Jared Fisher and Kevin LaPointe and we are tied up at four and a heavy hit there at the point made by Parks. And a shot off the point, that one goes into the safety netting. So faceoff looks like it's going to stay inside the Chicago zone as we are now tied right back up at four. It looks like 11-21 remaining in the second period. Faceoff won by the spaceman. Harrard gets it down low for Robbins. That one misses and now played along to the near corner as it looks like it's now grabbed by number 19, Lucas Robbins. 
And now it's going to be played along the near boards. Logan Robbins trying to apply pressure now. The Robbins brothers, product of the Fort Wayne High School, Leo Lyons from last year. Now it's going to be up ice. Gets around Stratton. Manorino centers it, but it's through the feet of Parker. Now out to the point. Cross ice. Marcate with the draw. Excuse me, Marcate with the shot. That one goes wide. And now sent down low. Manorino with it. Now it's going to be to the near side, out to the point. And it's going to be played by Stratton, another Leo Lyon from Fort Wayne. Logan Robbins with it now as he takes it to the far side. Manorino with it now for the Cougars. Out to the point. A shot that goes just wide. Centers it. It's loose in the crease. And it now rolls to the corner. And we have a whistle on the play. As it looks like the goaltender's glove came off. Ten thirteen remains in the second period. Faceoff remains inside the spaceman zone. So gamble out there for the Cougars, along with Kazarek. Oh, excuse me, Kazmarek, excuse me. As Kazmarek goes to the draw against Fisher. Kazmarek wins the draw for the Cougars. The shot from the points blocked in front. McNeil pressured now. It's going to be played along the corner. He's fighting for it. Still coming away with it. Tripped up on the play is McNeil. Now it's going to be played behind the net to the near side. McNichols with it now. As the shot there is blocked in front. McNeil and Gamble tied up. As now it's going to be played down low to Emmy Johnson. Johnson banks it off the glass to Huffman. Huffman trying to get it out, able to do so. And that one's blocked, and here is Fisher. Jared Fisher sends it down low. That one's gloved down by number 18 of the Chicago Cougars. That is Thomas Rukala. Good to see him back on the ice after taking that big hit early in the first. Glad to see he's okay. Emmy Johnson with it now. Johnson, cross ice pass, and that one's blocked there in front. As now it's played by the Cougars on the near side. Fisher trying to come away with it, able to do so as he'll turn around and bank it off the near side into the neutral zone to be played by Barimi. McNeil with it now as he gets back to his feet. Brandon McNeil with it now. Homestead Spartan of Fort Wayne. A lot of Fort Wayne team, or excuse me, a lot of Fort Wayne players coming here. Now it's going to be banked into the zone. Bauer with it now along to the point. And a slap shot there. That one goes wide. Bauer with it now. As he gets it over, McNeil with the steal. And then now trying to feed it to Perry. And now it's going to be Cameron Perry with the shot blocked in front. Yimin Kim gets it down low as now Chicago comes away. The stretch pass. And now it's a 2 on one for Chicago. Into the zone. Shot blocked by Huffman. Save and a rebound is finally covered. Stokes came in on the play, two on one. Looks like he had number nine for the Chicago Cougars. That is Tim Laskowski. As they came in two on one, a shot from Stokes left a rebound by the goaltender Shelkinov. Leskowski unable to cash it in. Face off one there by the spaceman Alvin Berard with it now as he gets it to the far side for LaPointe. Coming away with it, looks like it will be the spaceman. Centers it, but this block there in front by Spanos. That one tipped into the safety netting. Looks like faceoff will remain inside the Chicago zone. This is like 7.51 remaining in the second period. We are tied up at four.
Chicago wins the draw back, and now it's going to be played by number 65. That is Adam Barimi. Now it's going to be Huffman at the center ice, trying to get it in the zone. Now it is gathered up. Looks like by Schiebel. Schiebel gets it over to Huffman. LaPointe trying to get in the zone. That one's off the linesman. Now it's back into the neutral zone. Joseph coming away, or excuse me, that's Mahoney coming away with it. Deeks with the backhand, and that one's into the glove of Shelkinov. Alec Mahoney looking to add to his goal total there with his fourth of the night, but that one tipped into the glove by Shelkinov, and he covers the puck for face off inside the spaceman zone. Shellareth wins the draw for the Cougars. That one shot on net, save there. And now it's going to be played in the neutral zone by LaPointe. LaPointe gets it over to Cameron Perry. Perry trying to get around the defense, unable to do so. It looks like Robbins gets a shot and a save there by the goaltender Sambara. That one coming from number 87, Logan Robbins. Fisher to the draw once again for the spacemen. That's going to be a win in the zone. Stratton a shot. That one locked in front. And a cover by the goaltender, Sembera. That one was blocked by number 18, Rukala. This time it looks like Arnold will go to the draw for Chicago against Fisher. It's going to be another win for Chicago that time. That one's banked off the glass. A stretch pass, and now into the zone. Here's Bauer. Shot, and a beautiful save by the goaltender, Shinmarkov. But it is poked in by, it looks like, Lakowski. Shelkinov strongly disagreeing with that one, but it looks like it will hold. It's now 5-4, Chicago. Leskowski with the goal. Bauer and number five get the assist Stokes. So... Tim Makowski gets the goal from Stokes and Bauer, and Chicago regains the one goal lead. It's now 5 4. Chicago coming back in the zone. Here is Arnold. Arnold trying to get around the defense, unable to do so. Now it is to the near corner. A shot saved, another rebound opportunity, and scores. Bauer. So Chicago retaking the one goal lead and now here they come again. Mahoney trying to get his own, but he's tripped up on the play. And so the spacemen will go back on the penalty kill. So that one coming from Bauer, unsure of the assists. So Logan Robbins goes to the box for tripping. With 5.55 remaining in the second period. Chicago up by two. Marquette trying to keep it in the zone. As Mahoney gets down low, backhand by Heminger goes just wide, and now LaPointe will flip it out of the zone.
Now a stretch pass looking for Mahoney. He's, he kind of wasn't paying attention on that one. The point with it now, he'll send it back down the ice. Marquette loves it at center though. As now it is going to be played by Emmy, or excuse me, that is Brandy McNeil. Turnover in the zone. Here is a shot and a beautiful save, but the rebound comes out. That one coming from Hemminger. And that one will be whistled down for and off sides. So Hemminger with a good scoring opportunity. Shelkinov makes a save, but the rebound pops right back out. That's something that's been kind of killing Shelkinov here in this game is bad rebound control. That's something he hopes to look at improving going into the third period. So faceoff is going to be tied up. and looks like Arnold's going to come away with it for Chicago. Now inside the zone, number nine drops it for Arnold. As Lesmowski, excuse me, Leskowski dropping it back for Arnold. Arnold with it now tied up by Huffman. Leskowski coming in trying to assist, but he's bumped off by Huffman. And that one's flipped out of the zone. Play now by the goaltender, Simbera as he leaves it for Marquette. Marquette trying to get it up ice. Now it's going to be sent right back down by number five, Jack Huffman. Here's Fisher in the zone. Fisher shot. That one's off the glass and wide. Amy Johnson in the neutral zone gets it up to Fisher. Fisher into the zone. As Simbera will flip it off the glass up to Arnold. Laskowski gets up ice. Now it's going to be played behind the net. Now back up to the far point. Marquette sends it back down low looking for Arnold. Arnold back out to Marquette. Marquette is shot, tipped in front, but Amy Johnson gets it up to the point. Looks like Rukala gets it down low. Out of the corner, it's loose in the crease. And finally the whistle blows. It was loose that whole time, sitting just on the outside of the post. That's what you do, just play till you hear the whistle. That's exactly what Chicago was doing there. 3.43 remaining in the second period. Chicago still maintaining a two goal lead as they are up six to four over the Fort Wayne Spaceman. Robbins goes to the draw, and that's going to be won by Chicago. A shot right off the draw by McNichols goes just above the net. As Kazmarek now has it down low. And now it's going to be played by Kazmarek along the corner. Robbins comes away with it. And Schiebel banks off the glass and just out of the zone. That one flipped back in by Chicago. That one now will be stopped by Shelkinov. Shelkinov. Bounce along to the far side for Schiebel. Robbins trying to come away with it, and it's unable to do so. As now Mick Nicholson gets it into the zone, but he's poke checked at the point. As now it looks like the puck will finally move into the spaceman zone. Shelkinov forced to cover the puck as McNichols was coming into the zone. And Berard, and now we got more extracurricular as Berard pushed Jake Shelrith into the goaltender Shelkinov and Kazmarek coming in to give Berard a, kind of a piece of his mind on that one. Looks like Kazmarek will go to the box for Chicago. Coach Kaylee Schrock a little bit furious with the spaceman. As we look to await the official call. So 
So for those of us just tuning in, it is 6-4 in favor of the Chicago Cougars. As it's been kind of a back and forth game all night. It looks like 2.57 remaining in the second period. As Merrick gets a rough. And Berard gets a rough. So Berard and Kazmarek both get roughing minors. Looks like coincidentals. And the faceoff will remain inside of the space men's zone. Fisher against Heminger to the draw. That one's won by Heminger. He's been really good in the faceoff circle for Chicago. That's going to be out to the point. Shot. That's blocked in front by, looks like, McNeil. Now another drive from the point by Marquette goes wide. The point with it now as he's coming up the far side. And that one just offside. Now we're getting a lot of pushing and shoving after the whistle. This is something that the spacemen don't need to be doing as they are down by two. Especially when you're trailing, something that's not happened to you this season, one thing you need to have is composure and smart hockey. And that's something the spacemen are not showing right now. course that crowd being drawn by the fact that the puck was shot well after the whistle that is one thing coming from a goaltender myself you do not like that's one thing that your defensemen love to do is enforce that kind of rule say hey man why are you shooting after the whistle so it looks like more penalties will be given out Fisher goes to the box for the spaceman looks like Tom's Barons as well goes to the box We'll get the official calls here in just a couple seconds. It looks like nobody's going to go to the box for the Chicago Cougars. Looks like Chicago was intended to have a penalty on that play. Yosef Martinsik will go to the box. So Spaceman still down a man here as it's now a four on three power play. And last time this happened, Mahoney get, got a power play goal. So he looks to repeat his success earlier. So coming up to draw, Huffman with it now. That one's inside the neutral zone. Mahoney with it now. And now Marquette looking for a big hit on Huffman. And now it's going to be played inside the Chicago zone up to Alec Mahoney. Mahoney coming into the zone as that one's going to be tipped wide. Mahoney centers it but blocked by LaPointe. And now the net is going to be knocked off kind of accidentally by Manorino. Barons with unsportsmanlike conduct. Fisher with a rough. And Yosef Mantisarek, excuse me, I think I messed that one up, also with a rough. Now to the point of shot by Heminger, stopped by Shelkinov. That one goes into the safety netting. 
So Thomas Barron gets unsportsmanlike conduct for shooting after the whistle. Jared Fisher gets the rough. And Joseph Martinsick also gets a rough for Chicago. So two roughs are coincidentals in the play. That's resulting in a 4 one 3 power play for Chicago. Marquette gets it down low. Manorino back out to Marquette. To Manorino. Manorino is shot, tipped in front by Heminger, and they score. And it's another power play goal. So Heminger extends the lead to three off a power play goal. And now we return to four on four hockey. We'll wait the official assists on the play, but it looks like Marquette will be one of them. Here's Arnold. Manorino with the assist as well as Marquette off the goal there by Heminger. As now is going to be played by Bauer. That one bounces over his stick and now played down by Emmy Johnson. Emmy Johnson now over to the near side. That one's turned over. Here's Bauer. That one just barely misses. Way out of his net was Shelkinov. Now here's Arnold down low. Bauer lays a hit there behind the net. Now it's out to the point. Shot there. That one's directed for Arnold. Kind of a trick shot as it was actually a pass. Now it's going to be played by Perry. Perry goes around Barimi. And now a stretch pass for Shellreth. Coming in the zone to the backhand and a good defensive play there by Alvin Berard breaks it up. And now it's gonna be played to the far corner by Perry, but he loses it to Bauer. Out to the point now, back down low, looking for Bauer, can't connect. Now to the near side, it's gonna be played at the point. And there's Lukowski with a shot, save, rebound. Opportunity is covered by Shelkinov. Lukowski gave it over to Parker. Parker with the shot and a save by Shelton on that one. Thirty-two point three remaining in the second period. Chicago up seven to four. Now it's going to be a face-off win there for the Cougars. A shot from the point is stopped in front, and that one will be kicked to the corner by Parker as the point tries to get it out, unable to do so. Another chance. That one's whiffed on. Here's Parker once again in the high slot of shot. That one just wide. Now to the corner is going to be Laskowski with it now stolen by Thomas Behrens. Ten seconds remaining in the period. Behrens with it now. Hits the brakes and the shot goes off the blocker. Huffman looking for a redirect. And that one clears the zone and this horn goes. And we got more after the whistle activity. So Chicago will take a 7-4 lead into the second intermission. As we will come back for the second intermission recap here on the Spaceman Broadcast Network.
Yakni Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Yakni Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors for every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Brooks steals it, tips it away to himself. He'll go to the hoop and slam it down. They attack, they get a great shot. Here he comes. And look at Shot hits the post. And the center needs to the Luke Hipster shot scores. Rush comes back. Oh, almost picked, picked off by Ethan Hoover. And the takedown. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. It's the Comets. Comets from the from the sky. 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 Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne Mad Ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. 
developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. We are back at the Sport One Parkview Ice House in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We are in the middle of the second intermission between the Chicago Cougars and the Fort Wayne Spacemen. Chicago coming out to a commanding 7-4 lead going into the third period as they look to kind of wrap this up, giving themselves their sixth win on the season. And this, if the score holds, will be the Spaceman Spaceman's first ever loss as this is their first year ever in existence. So kind of recap the scoring here. Tom's Barron scores two goals for the Spaceman in the third, or excuse me, the second period as he gets a natural hat trick for the spaceman. That made it a tie game at three to three. Then Alec Mahoney of the Chicago Cougars gets a hat trick of his own. That made it four to three in favor of the Chicago Cougars. Then Cameron Perry ties it up for the spaceman once again at four about midway through the second period. Then after that, it was pretty much all Chicago as they had goals from Tim Leskowski after the goaltender Shelkinov made a marvelous save. Leskowski poked home the rebound. Then later on, it was number 16, Brett Bauer with a goal off a beautiful pass. That made it six to four in favor of the Chicago Cougars. And then Braden Heminger makes it a seven to four game for the Chicago Cougars off a goal, or excuse me, off assists from Manorino and Cody Marquette. So that's where we currently sit as Chicago maintains the three goal lead. Don't forget these two teams play once again tomorrow here at the Sport One Parkview Ice House. Puck drop there for that game is 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. And as you've already seen, these, this game alone is getting really chippy between these two teams. One thing Fort Wayne has to do is play with composure, play smart hockey. One thing they cannot be doing is just taking a constant trip or line of parade to the penalty box. As right now, that's kind of killing them. Always being shorthanded or always playing four and four hockey, never having that fifth man on the ice to play at the speed and competitive level that they know they can. That's one thing Coach Kaylee Schrock is probably in that locker room saying right now, like, boy, stay out of the box. We are fine when we play five on five. It's when we get into the box, get these penalty troubles is what's killing us right now. That's one thing that the spacemen need to do. Obviously, one thing for Chicago is obviously keep the irritation level for the spacemen up. Make the spacemen get those, how you say, stupid penalties drawing them in and getting them in the box to where the Cougars now have the advantage. As you've seen here in the game already, they have taken advantage of that as they're now up by three as we get ready for the third period between the Spacemen and the Chicago Cougars. When we come back, it will be the third period right here on the Spacemen Broadcast Network. Thank you for supporting Summit City Sports. For the last several years, we've provided the Fort Wayne community and beyond with coverage of a variety of sports, thanks to our title sponsorship from Parkview Sports Medicine. Since we began in 2015, our annual budget has covered the cost of videographers and commentators to over 300 plus games each year. 
new equipment and maintenance of that equipment, along with increased broadcast rights fees from the IHSAA. This season, we're reaching out to friends, families, and local businesses for additional sponsorships and donations. You can help us grow and get coverage to your favorite team or sport. A Summit City Sports sponsorship or donation will help make that happen. We have the goal of bringing fans live stream games of every SAC game we cover. With the additional funds, we'd invest in mobile internet devices, allowing us to bring our supporters every SAC conference football and boys and girls basketball games live, as well as more coverage for sports like cross country, tennis, golf, swimming, wrestling, track and field, baseball, and softball. For more information on sponsorships or how to donate, visit SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors for every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age. Thank you for supporting Summit City Sports. For the last several years, we've provided the Fort Wayne community and beyond with coverage of a variety of sports, thanks to our title sponsorship from Parkview Sports Medicine. Since we began in 2015, our annual budget has covered the cost of videographers and commentators to over 300 plus games each year. New equipment and maintenance of that equipment, along with increased broadcast rights fees from the IHSAA. This season, we're reaching out to friends, families, and local businesses for additional sponsorships and donations. You can help us grow and get coverage to your favorite team or sport. A Summit City Sports sponsorship or donation will help make that happen. We have the goal of bringing fans live stream games of every SAC game we cover. With the additional funds, we'd invest in mobile internet devices, allowing us to bring our supporters every SAC conference football and boys and girls basketball games live, as well as more coverage for sports like cross country, tennis, golf, swimming, wrestling, track and field, baseball, and softball. For more information on sponsorships or how to donate, visit SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. 
Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do. So we are coming back here shortly before puck drop, about 25 seconds before the end of the intermission, as the Cougars are up seven to four. A little bit of history here for those of you who don't know about the Fort Wayne Spacemen. This is, of course, their very first year in existence for the team, as they are kind of a, um, they're supported a lot by the local ECHL team, the Fort Wayne Comets as they are donning the orange and black that was made famous here in Fort Wayne by the Comets. The Comets entering their 68th season in existence as they are only outlasted by the original six NHL franchises and the Hershey Bears of the American Hockey League. So you see kind of a lot of parent, like a sort of parent affiliation between the Fort Wayne Comets and the Fort Wayne Spacemen as even the logo is a bit of a spinoff to the 1970s logo worn by the Fort Wayne Comets. Kind of an old Captain Comet was its name. So it looks like there is a goaltending change for the Fort Wayne Spaceman. So it looks like it's going to be possibly Michael Heward, I believe is how that's pronounced, in goal for the Spaceman. As it looks like Shalkanov's night will come to an end. So Michael Heward is in net now for the Spacemen. This is the first time we've seen him in net. Last time, or last weekend, it was a switch between Shelkinov in game one and then Lance Giovanko, or excuse me, it was Isaac Gleisner and Giovanko in net for the Spacemen last weekend against the Motor City Hockey Club. And so we are underway here in the third period. Cougars up by three. As now it's going to be played in the neutral zone by Heminger. Heminger over to Yosef. Yosef trying to center it, but that is going to be blocked away now by Huffman. Yosef drops it back now, played by Alvin Perard. As that one's going to be chipped up to the near side and kept alive at the point by Alec Mahoney, who's got a hat trick on the night. Alvin Perard pressured now by, looks like, Heminger. Now he's going to try up the near side. He'll just flip it over to Huffman, and now it's going to be played by the Cougars. Josef Manton, oh, excuse me, that is Josef Martinski. Martinski. Now it's going to be grabbed now by the Cougars. Is it's now behind the net, up to the near side. Josef trying to get it up ice. Now played to Arnold. Arnold up to Bauer. Bauer with it now, drops to Arnold and a shot. That one goes wide. Now played by Huffman. Huffman trying to get out of zone. That is going to be kept alive there by Trevor Stokes. And now it's going to be along the near side. A centering pass to Arnold's broken up, and now it's going to be out to the neutral zone. Rukawa with it now. Stretch pass up ice to Bauer, he tips it in the zone, played now by Arnold. Arnold avoids a check, and that was poked away by Emmy Johnson. Arnold with it now, trying to get out to the point. Stokes a shot, save, rebound, and score. That is Arnold. So Chicago picking up right where they left off as they are now up by four. So Arnold with the goal, Stokes with the assist, and it's now eight to four in favor of Chicago. Spaceman facing kind of the first dose of adversity here in the season. Now along the near corner, it's gonna be played, tied up there. Now McNichols coming away with it. 
As now the spaceman gain control coming down the ice. Here is Logan Robbins. Robbins into the zone. That one goes off. Excuse me. Looks like it's McNeil actually. As Sheeble's with it now. Sheeble bumped off there by Stokes. As now it's going to be Parker with it. Parker banks it off the glass. That one goes down. Icing waved off. McNeil pushed into the boards. And now it's going to be played by Robbins. Robbins loses it to Parker. Parker trying to get out to the point, deflected by LaPointe. But here's a shot at the point by number 21 of the Chicago Cougars. That is Andrew Cervantes. So Cervantes with it now. Now it's turnover, centering feed. Good keep there by Huffman, a shot blocked by Cervantes. Now it's gonna be Gamble with it. Gamble coming up to the far side. So he's poke checked there by Alvin Barrard. Gerard stick lifted and pushed into the boards there by Gamble. And now it's going to be Huffman with it. Huffman into the near corner, pressured now as he gets it up to Perry. Perry coming down the ice. Cameron Perry banks it off the boards to himself into the near corner. As he looks to center and drops it for Devin Perry. And now it's going to be played by Huffman. Huffman down low to the corner. Barimi comes in, same with Gamble, trying to apply pressure. Here's Robbins. And now it's going to be down the ice, and that one goes for an icing. Barimi looking for a penalty there as he kind of got slugged in the face there by Devin Perry. Perry kind of got away with that one there. 16-23 remaining in the third period. Chicago up 8-4 over the spacemen. Face off down inside the Chicago zone to the left of the goaltender Simbera. Kazmarek to the draw against Fisher. That one's won by Kazmarek. Chicago doing a great job in the face-off circle as they won pretty much most of the face-off tonight. As now it's going to be kept alive at the point by Huffman. Barimi with it now. He'll bang it off the boards, trying to get it out. Able to do so, and it's knocked down by Jack Huffman. Huffman will bang it off the boards to Fisher, and Fisher gets in his own play onside. Fisher shot, good save there. Pretty much catching the toe of the goaltender, Sembera. Tom's Barons with the shot, save into the shoulder, and he hangs on. Sembera taking exception to that one, and that's going to draw a crowd on that. So we got some penalties coming up on the play. We'll get the official word on it, but trying to figure out what's going on with this. Because that one drew a crowd as Huffman poked the goaltender after the whistle. And it looks like someone's going to be heading to the showers early as it looks like it's for 19 for Chicago. That is Danny Manorino if it is, and it is. So Manorino heads to the locker room early tonight. 15-49 remaining in the third period. Chicago up eight to four. Huffman goes to the box for slashing. Manorino gets a game misconduct. And the faceoff should be inside the Cougar zone with the Fort Wayne power play. So as I said earlier, a lot of local talent here for the Fort Wayne spacemen. 
A lot of players coming out of the high school divisions from Carroll High School, Leo High School, and now the Homestead Spartans High School hockey team has a couple representatives here. Brandon McNeil coming off of that one. The Huffman brothers and the Perry brothers coming out of the Carroll Chargers High School team. And the Robin brothers coming out of the Leo Lions along with Stratton. So a lot of local talent here for the Fort Wayne Spacemen. It looks like it looks like Manorino also got a five minute major as well. Kazmarek gonna be serving that one. So four on four hockey for two minutes and then the Spaceman will have a three minute power play barring any other penalties. As now is gonna be controlled by Robbins. Robbins drops it back and now it's gonna be played over to looks like Emmy Johnson. Johnson taking his time, coming down the near side, drops for Alvin Berard. He'll throw it in the zone. That's in the glove, but kept alive. And now to Marquette. Stretch pass there for Shelverick. Excuse me, that is Shelrith. And now it's going to be played inside of the Cougar zone. Robbins trying to center it to Perry. That is going to be going wide. Now Alvin Berard with a shot blocked by Mahoney. Robbins with it now. Pressured there by Shellref. That one's shot in front. That's tipped away by Perry. Just kind of looking to redirect the puck on the goaltender. And now it's going to be in the corner. Marquette battling Robbins for possession. And now looks like McNichols comes down the far side. He'll flip it into the zone just wider than that. As Alvin Berard now has it for the spaceman. Alvin Berard. To the far side. Looks like for Emmy Johnson. That one looking for a stretch pass up to Tom's Barons. Now he gets inside the zone looking for Fisher. Fisher finally coming away with it. She looks to bank it off the boards, but Parker knocks that one away. Kala sends it down low, and now it's going to be grabbed by LaPointe of the spaceman. LaPointe back ends it to the far corner for Fisher. Fisher tied up now into the corner as now it is going to be played back down low by LaPointe. That one blocked down by, looks like Bauer, but coming away with it is LaPointe. LaPointe to the near side, and it's gonna be poked away there by Stokes. Barron's with it. Spaceman back to full strength, power play now. Here's Fisher a shot, that one goes just wide. And a good chance there for the Spaceman, finds the boards. As the net's now knocked off, faceoff should remain inside the Cougar zone. 13-36 remaining in the third period. 2-48 remaining in the major. Spacemen find themselves down by four. They got to get something going here pretty soon or they might be facing their first loss of the season. Fisher wins the draw from Bauer, and now it's LaPointe at the drive, a shot from the point. excuse me, that one is stopped by the goaltender. Perry tied up along the boards. Fisher coming in to assist, as now it's played by LaPointe. LaPointe a shot, that one's a save, and the goaltender hangs on. So faceoff will be inside the Chicago zone to the left of the goaltender Sambera. Arnold tries to poke it out of the zone, but Perry with a shot that's blocked in front by Leskowski. That one near the glove of the goaltender Sambera, and he tries to get it out, but Huffman knocks it down. Huffman pressured now by Arnold along the near boards. Now Fisher tried to come in to assist, but it's going to be sent down low. Now to the far side, and it's going to be tied up again behind the net. Now back to the near side. A pass from down low, intended for Fisher, goes wide. That one out of the zone. Two minutes remaining in the power play for the spaceman. LaPointe sets up behind the net. Up ice to Fisher. Fisher now cuts to the near side. Goes to the slot. Fisher shot, scores! 
baseman come back to within three off a of power play goal by Fisher as he finds the score sheet once again. So Fisher on the score sheet. It sound like these just come from Devin Perry. So Fisher with the goal from Perry and now it's gonna be played down low. Here's Chicago with it now. As Yosef down low. He's doing a good job making sure the puck stays along the boards but moving just enough to prevent play from stopping. Here's Hemminger with the turnaround attempt, and that one is stopped and covered by the goaltender, Heward. Twelve, eleven remaining in the third period. One twenty-three remaining in the power play for the spaceman, and that one will be a win by Fisher. So now it looks like Lapointe with it. Lapointe. Down low for Huffman. That one's blocked away and Chicago with a chance, but Hemminger has it poked away by Huffman. Barons gets it down low. That one's gonna be played along the near side by Hemminger. That one's poked out of the zone. Hemminger trying to come away with it. It's a 2-1-2 for the Cougars. Hemminger broken up there by the spaceman's Captain Fisher. So an opportunity there for the Cougars between Hemminger and Yosef Martinsik. But a good defensive play there by Fisher. Knocks the puck away, breaking up the opportunity. LaPointe sends it back down low. Bad pass, here's Parker. Parker trying to center it. That's broken up. Now here's LaPointe. 38 seconds remaining on the power play. LaPointe lobs it in the zone, but that's knocked down by Rukala. And the stretch pass will go down the ice. Hayward sends it down low. Now it's going to be grabbed and play with it down for an injured Chicago player behind the net. Looks like it's Jake Shellreth as he lost his balance in the play, winning the boards very awkwardly. Hope he's okay on that one. Face off will be in the neutral zone. 23 seconds remaining in the power play for the spacemen. And it looks like 11 11 remaining on the game clock. So the faceoff will be just outside of the Chicago zone. Arnold to the draw for Chicago. That one will be won by Jared Fisher. Down low now, that is going to be set for the defenseman Rukawa by Sambera. That one finds a skate and it goes over the glass into the Chicago bench. So faceoff will once again be just outside the Chicago blue line. 12 seconds remaining in the power play for the spacemen. They are still down by three with just under 11 minutes to play. Barons with now that one. Shot well above the net and into the safety netting. Looks like they rule faceoff will stay inside the Chicago zone to the left of the goaltender Sambera. Tied up on the draw, it looks like it's gonna be Marquette knocking it off the glass. And now Chicago will return to full strength. As now it is going to be Marquette with it. Stopping behind the net. 
Now it's gonna be Schiebel, Schiebel with it now. Schiebel's shot, that one off the shoulder and into the glove of the Golden to Simbera. Robbins to the draw, that was won by Robbins after the point, Ferrar with a shot. That was blocked in front. Here's Parker with it now, Parker gets around, looks like Jimmy Johnson, and that one goes to the corner, centers it out. Here's Mahoney with a shot, that's a save by Hayward. Parker with a great deke around Jimmy Johnson, and he finds Mahoney just outside the face-off circle near the boards. Mahoney elects to shoot it, and Hayward equal to the task. And it looks like the spaceman Alvin Barrard is going to begin the penalty. He's going to go to the box. Sounds like Alvin Barrard is getting a game misconduct on the play. Now off the draw. Chicago with it at the point. Marquette sends it down low. And a heavy hit there into the boards. That one's definitely going to draw a penalty. Now we're getting more extracurricular after the whistles. So the spacemen getting more penalties in the play with 10.04 remaining in the third period. It's now eight to five Chicago. And it looks like we'll try to figure this out as the spacemen are filling the penalty box right now. And it looks like number five, Jack Huffman's gonna get the gate as he heads off the ice. the official penalties on the play, but Halfman definitely heading to the showers early. Still waiting the official call. Two minutes are up on the board though for the spacemen as the Chicago Cougars will go back on the power play. Huffman with the game is conduct. And 13 for the Chicago Cougars. That is Dylan Parker with the game is conduct. So now off the draw, it's gonna be played at the point by Marquette. That one stopped in front, shot, save. It's loose through the crease and into the corner. 
Now Marquette at the point. Looks like over to Mahoney. Now it's over to Yosef. Yosef with it now. Out to Marquette at the point. A drive and a blocker save there by Hayward. Heminger with it now. Leaves it for Marquette at the point. He banks it down low. Looks like for Heminger. Pressure with LaPointe. Huffman trying to come in. As now it's going to be a kick out to the point, but nobody there for the Cougars. And coming away with it looks like Logan Robbins. Robbins, oh, it just bounced under his stick. As now the Cougars come the other way. Here is Yosef in the zone. Backhanded across the crease. That one is wide. And now a played up eyes looking for Fisher, but Rukawa keeps it alive for Chicago. Now it's going to be, looks like Heminger. Drops it for Rukawa. Back to Heminger. Heminger down low, looking for Yosef on the play, but it's stolen by LaPointe. As now it is going to be Fisher. Fisher flips down the ice to the near side to be stopped by the goaltender, Simbera. Stretch pass there. As he looks like the tip it in the zone, number 74, Jake Shellref. Now it's going to be played once again by the goaltender, Simbera. Now to the far side, look for Laskowski. Laskowski into the zone as he takes it to the corner. Backhands it down low for Rukawa at the point. Shot there, tipped in front and out of the zone. And now another shot, tipped in front, scores. And it's now 9-5 to five in favor of Chicago. We'll wait the Slareth with the goal. And the assist to Stokes. So 74, Jake Slareth, I do apologize for the name all night, gets the goal, the assist to Stokes, and it's now nine to five in favor of the Chicago Cougars. That one coming just after the power play expired. And now here's a chance for the spaceman. Here's Perry with a chance, but he can't quite corral it as it rolls in front of the crease and it's going to be covered up by the goaltender, Simbera. Seven, 57 remaining in the third period. Spaceman down by four. That one won by Cass Merrick with a face-off win. As now it's going to be Robbins with it. Cass Merrick picks it up, and he sends it down low. Out to the far side, looking for, looks like, Gamble. That one banks off the boards and down the ice. Had to be played by Emmy Johnson. That one almost kept alive, but it's finally got out of the zone by the spaceman. Looks like Emmy Kim gets it out. That one rolls to the far side. Barry gets up to Kazmarek. Now it's played up to Brett Barry. Now Gamble with it. Gamble with a shot saved by the goaltender Hayward, and he hangs on. So 7.14 remaining on the clock here in the third period. Chicago up. Nine to five. Face off. We'll stay inside the Fort Wayne zone. Looks like to the right of the goaltender, Michael Hayward. It looks like it's going to be Fisher to the draw against. Looks like Shellworth. Coming out of the zone. That one sent into the safety netting. Looks like by Stokes. Face off. Looks like it'll stay just outside of the Chicago zone. With seven and nine remaining on the clock. Face off, one by Fisher. That one shot into the zone by LaPointe. And now it's gonna be played around the boards to the near side by the goaltender, Sinbera to McNichols. 
That one out of the zone. Stratton with it now, pressured by McNichols. And now it's going to be played by Shellrift. That one, a heavy hit there. As now it's going to be played by number nine, Liskowski. Low point with it now, pressured by McNichols. Lakowski lays a hit on LaPointe. Now here's Tom's Barons. Barons gets inside this Cougar zone, and here's Fisher. Fisher into the corner, tries to center it to Barons, but it's broken up. And McNichols gets it to center ice, and that one will just get flipped down in the zone. And now, Kaz, looks like Kaz Merrick drops the gloves going after Fisher on that one. So 6-16 remaining in the third period. It's actually, it's number 15, Brett Berry is going to be given the locker room early. And we shall wait the official call on this one. We currently await the penalty calls from the officials. They're discussing it over as Brett Berry was very upset with a play happening just outside of the slot. And the referees are discussing what is going to come up with this. Don't forget these same two teams face off tomorrow here at the Sport One Parkview Ice House with the 2.30 face off. So one has to wonder how things will kind of carry over into tomorrow between these two teams as they're already starting to have very bad blood between the two. Fisher gets a rough. So Fisher with a rough, and it sounds like Brett Barry will get a five minute major for fighting in a game misconduct, which is quite unusual. He did drop the gloves, but there wasn't really a fight engagement between any players. So that one kind of confusing on the call. I mean, yes, he did drop the gloves, but there was no real altercation between two certain players. Either way, Spaceman will have another three minute power play after the minor to Fisher expires with 616 remaining in the third period. Face off. Looks like it'll be. I'm not sure where it will go as looks like another Chicago player will head to the box, head to the locker room. That is Parker going to the locker room. Dylan Parker heading out to the locker room. Not sure why that one is. Unsure why he went. Official given the definition over to the Chicago coaching staff. And it looks like now Alvin Berard's heading off the ice. I believe he was assessed the game misconduct earlier in the game, but he just never left the, to the locker room. 
So face well, face off, excuse me, will remain down into the Fort Wayne Spaceman zone to the left of the goaltender Michael Hayward. Now it looks like we're uh, finally getting things sorted out off that play. So the linesman just dropped the puck with Chicago not even at the face-off circle. And now here comes the spaceman in the zone. Robbins a shot. That one goes high and wide. Now along the near boards, Mahoney with it now. is is now going to be skated up the ice by Alec Mahoney and into the zone. It's like Logan Robbins with the now for the spaceman coming into the neutral zone. Straight up the middle and into the Chicago zone. Excuse me, that's actually McNeil. Here is Devin Perry trying to get it down low, but unable to do so. Amy Johnson to Robbins. Robbins, pressure there by, looks like, Marquette. As now, it looks like Bauer banks it off the boards, looking for McNichols. Now it's like McNeil has it. Now it's going to be into the zone. Bauer trying to get a hand on it, but it could do so. Amy Johnson with it now. Taking a look over his options, decides to skate back. Tom's Barons back down low for Amy Johnson. 450 remaining in the third. Here's Johnson inside. Oh, excuse me, it looks like he got poke check right. The blue line looked like by Gamble. Now here's Barons. Poke checked away by Stokes. McNeil pressured there, and now it's going to be out of the zone. As Barons tried to get possession, unfortunately, he kicked it out of the zone. Nine seconds remaining in the minor to Fisher as they will now officially go on the power play. Here's Kazmarek with it now. He's poke checked at the blue line. And the spaceman gained possession. It's like Tom's Barons coming in the zone. Barons a shot. Blocker saved by Simbera. And that one goes off the side of the cage and behind the net. Now over to the point with a shot. That one tipped up into the netting by Jared Fisher. 3.54 remaining in the third period. 2.38 remaining in the power play for the spacemen. So face-off will be inside the Chicago zone to the left for the goal to Sambera. And it's going to be won by Fisher. Out to the point for, looks like Huffman a shot. That one's blocked in front by Mahoney. Now to the far corner. Trying to center it. Decides to go to the near side. And it's another penalty going to be coming up. And now it looks like Mahoney's going to go. LaPointe, down low to Robbins. Back to LaPointe. A point to Fisher a shot. That one goes above the net and wide. Perry to Robbins. To La Point. La Point at the point. Now it's La Point to the circle. To the slot. That one's knocked away by Hemminger. And finally the whistle is gone. And it looks like the coaching staff of Chicago's getting thrown out. We'll wait on the official call. So it looks like the spacemen are going to be calling timeout. So more penalties being written down on the score sheet. One has to wonder that the scorekeepers are kind of running out of ink in that category. 
as this is yet another high penalty minute filled affair for the spacemen. As we still have three minutes and 14 seconds to go through. And Alec Mahoney gets a two minute cross checking on the play. So off the draw at the point, LaPointe with it now. Down low, looking for Barons. Barons to Perry. LaPointe with it now. Looking for Fisher. Good job there by Heminger to break up the play. Kind of got Fort Wayne scattering there as it's down in the corner. Now to the near side. Fisher trying to keep it in. Heminger, good job there, reading the play and throws it down the ice. Here come the spacemen, LaPointe gets it to Fisher. Fisher, taking a look over his options, decides to go behind the net to the near side. Centers it to Perry, but can't control the pass, and now here is Perry. Perry to Huffman. Huffman with a shot, that is in the glove of the goaltender, Sambara. With 2.25 remaining in the third period. Face off, one by Fisher, as now it's gonna be LaPointe at the point. Get it down low. Huffman to Perry. LaPointe a shot, that one saved. And here we go with more extracurricular activities after the whistle. As now it looks like Perry might be going to the box. Gretchen Huffman is going to be heading to the gate for slashing the goaltender after the whistle. Yep, Huffman gets the gate for slashing. Looks like still got 2.11 remaining on the clock. Face off down inside the Fort Wayne zone. So face off one there by the Cougars. That one goes just over the net and wide. Chicago maintaining great pressure. Here's Joseph a shot and he snipes it. Into the top corner is now 10 to five. Chicago doubling up on the goals. With a minute 58 remaining in the third period, that is actually a shorthanded goal. That one, number 26, Josef Martinsik, shorthanded goal, puts the Chicago Cougars up by five. So at this point, it's kind of all academic now as it looks like the Fort Wayne Spacemen are going to get their first loss of the season. They'll drop to 3-1 and one, while the Chicago Cougars will improve to 6-1 and one, as they maintain their lead in the Midwest East Division. LaPointe to Emmy Johnson. Down low, Johnson. Up to Tom's Barons. Barons over to Fisher. Fisher in the zone, gets around, starts to the deke, and a good poke check by Simbera. Great read, realizing that Fisher would have an extra second to try to catch up to the puck. Simbera comes out with the poke check, and now Fort Wayne had to reset. LaPointe to Fisher. Fisher 
to the corner. Sagan now carries to the near side, out to the point. LaPointe to Emmy Johnson, a shot, that one. It's off the shoulder of Sambera and into the safety netting. With a minute 20 remaining in third period. And the few penalties on the clock are getting ready to expire. A major assessed to number 15 of the Chicago Cougars. Brett Berry's getting ready to expire, as well as the minor to Huffman and number 24 of the Chicago Cougars, Alec Mahoney. So all teams look to be back to five on five hockey with a minute 10 remaining in the third. As Emmy Johnson gets it down low. Now to the far side, Alec Mahoney gets it out to the point. The point keeps it in. Now Rukala gets it down low with a stretch pass to Alec Mahoney and he's off sides. 55 seconds remaining in the third. Chicago up by three. Alec Mahoney looking to be one of the number one stars for this game as he's got three goals on the night for the Chicago Cougars. Of course, a big effort by the goaltender Sambara trying to keep his team well ahead of the play, making save after save when he had to. Kazmarek wins the draw back for Gamble. Gamble sends it around to the far side. And Yemin Kim throws a hit on Leskowski. Yeah, another penalty going up on the board. Here is a deke, and that one is saved by Hayward. As the parade to the penalty box continues with Fort Wayne Spaceman 41.2 remaining in the third. Yemen Kim, two minutes for interference on the play. Face off down inside the Fort Wayne zone. Face off one by Perry. He'll wrap it around the boards. Now to the near side. Centering feed to Gamble a shot. That one stopped in front. And another chance. That was saved once again by Hayward. Now out to the point for Barimi. Barimi a shot. That one's loose. And Gim Gamble another chance. And that one's in. So that one bouncing all over the place is now the space, or excuse me. Yeah, the spacemen are now down by six. It's now 10, or excuse me, 11 to five. Looks like Kazmarek will get the goal. That one, as I said, bounced around for a long time. Sounds like Kazmarek, they're gonna give him unassisted on the play. Not quite sure how that happened. As that puck was bouncing around all over the place. It looked like assist might have been to Gamble, but as I said, they ruled unassisted Kazmarek. 22.5 remaining in the third period. It is 11 to five, Chicago. And that one, won by Kazmarek. And looks like Fort Wayne is just gonna let Chicago kind of run the clock down. On this one, eight seconds remaining in the third. That one out of the zone. Tom's Barons with it now. He'll send it over to Fisher. Fisher throws it into the zone. That one wide. And that will do it. The Chicago Cougars are victorious. In this one, as they win by a commanding score of 11 to 5. So Chicago coming away with the 11-5 to 5 victory. We'll come back and kind of give a little bit of a recap here as the Fort Wayne Spacemen get their first loss on the season. You're watching Spacemen Hockey on the Spacemen Broadcast Network.
Sydney Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors for every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age. And so we are back here at the Sport One Parkview Ice House here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where the Chicago Cougars have come away victorious over the Fort Wayne Spacemen. Chicago wins by a score of 11 to 5. So, so a couple of things to take away for this one for the Spacemen is obviously staying out of the box and keeping a very composed game, smart hockey, something that they had to do that they kind of fell away from as the period went on and as the game went on, they kept just getting scored on and scored on and scored on. And big hit after big hit, eventually the tempers just flared up too much and they just couldn't keep a composed game. They couldn't play smart hockey anymore. They just let their emotions run wild. And in this one, it cost them as they are defeated for the first time this season. Chicago will, however, extend their season to 6-1 and one, as they now have a higher point lead over the Spacemen for the number one spot in the Midwest East Division. As I said, these two teams will be here tomorrow afternoon for a 2.30 puck drop here at the Sport 1 Parkview Ice House. So we will see how things carry over into tomorrow afternoon and I will be joined by my partner, Kent Horman, tomorrow. So it will be nice to have him back on the mic. I have been your play-by-play -play announcer, Brandon Porter, on the night. We thank you for tuning in here to the Fort Wayne Spaceman Hockey on the Spaceman Broadcast Network. <laughs>